What's up everyone? My name's LBJ. That's E-L-B-J. Sometimes the L is silent. And I am your host for EPW's Everything Pro Wrestling's The Countout. And just like everything EPW does, it's made by the fans and for the fans. So you may be asking, what is The Countout? Well, Every week, you're going to get a wrap-up of wrestling news and moments in a short but jam-packed podcast episode. You're going to hear a 10 count of top news stories and my commentary on them. You're going to get a top 5 count of wrestlers of the week as determined, well, today by me, but potentially by a listener's voting poll. Well, we'll see where we go. And then you're going to end with a 3 count of my predictions. So, without any further ado, let's get into the show. It's time for the 10 Count News. One. One. Coming in at number one this week on our 10 Count News is the PWI 500 list was released this week. Um, This is always, of course, a huge topic of discussion amongst wrestling fans wrestling haters, wrestling community, wrestlers themselves, wrestling storylines. I could go on. I could go on. The PWI 500 has over uh, the years increasingly more and more, it seems, become a bigger and bigger deal. So this year's top 10 are as follows. Number 10, Jonathan Gresham. Number nine, Big E. Number eight, Vikingo. Number seven, Brian Danielson. Number six, Cody Rhodes. Number five, Bobby Lashley. Number four, Hangman Page. Number three, CM Punk. Number two, Okada. And number one, the tribal chief, the head of the table, Roman Reigns, has done it yet again. Two. Oh, hooked up pretty good. Oh, my God. And it's close. close. He's going to tap. It's close. close. Yes. yes. Whoa. Here is your winner advancing in the tournament, the American Dragon, Brian Danielson. What a battle. A show of appreciation by Daniel Garcia and now Lord Regal. We know next Wednesday night, AEW Grand Slam, it will be Blackpool Combat Club versus Blackpool Combat Club. That's right. Coming in at number two this week is our uh, main event set for next week. You just heard Brian Danielson defeated Chris Jericho to move on into the finals. And we will have John Moxley versus Brian Danielson at Arthur Ashe Stadium for AEW's Grand Slam this Wednesday to determine the new AEW World Champion. Three. NXT has been and always will be about developing the superstars of tomorrow. But we will always reflect and acknowledge the past. NXT is constantly evolving with a focus on the future. Superstars develop and move on. But our message to our passionate fans will never change. We are NXT. So as we heard that ending to NXT this past week, uh, visually we saw at the end of that the NXT logo go through a bit of a change and the 2.0 fell off and the logo appeared but with different colors. It seems as though we might be heading back to form with NXT as we saw some black and gold but it was mainly a new white and gold NXT logo. What this means for the future of NXT? uh, We don't know. And based off the information that there were tapings that happened, I have no idea if that brand change will show up as soon as next week or if it's going to be a few weeks before we see like a set or a vibe or a camera style or whatever kind of change is coming. But seemingly so, NXT 2.0 is beating its final 
beats. Four. Four. At number four this week, we have Edge being written out of WWE. And the reason that uh, I have put this so high kind of on our list this week is this has happened quite a bit. Um, And after the reports came out of Edge possibly hinting at retirement next year at a Canada show, um, seemingly being written out Uh, only shortens the amount of time that we'll see him. Uh, Hopefully it's not too long. Um, But yeah, uh, it's kind of worrisome. Hopefully there's nothing serious as to the reason that he had to be written out, just that he's taking some time, Uh, you know, maybe not working a full-time schedule for the rest of his run. Um, But concerning nonetheless, as I am a big fan of the Rated R Superstar, and uh, I don't want to see him quite go yet, although I will be much happier to see him go on his own terms rather than the ordeal we had to deal with back in 2014. Um, So yeah, uh, what do you guys think if... uh, you can give us some feedback on our social medias, on reviews, on comments, wherever you hear this, or wherever you follow us. Uh, let us know what you think about Edge being written out one more time. And seemingly, uh, is this is this the third time that he's been written out this year alone? Hmm. Five. five. Number five this week was Solo Sokoa winning the North American title on NXT 2.0 this past week. Uh, It was initially set up to be Carmelo Hayes versus Wesley based off of a fan vote, but they jumped Wesley in the back, making it so that he couldn't come out to compete. Uh, Carmelo cut a promo saying that uh, no one was really on his level, that no one could take him out, and then Solo Sokoa's music hit and uh, they had a match, and Solo won uh, with the Flying Solo. Uh, Big news for Solo Sokoa, he has been all over the place in the last week and a half, and uh, now North American champion, making the bloodline even stronger. Six. Six. Number six this week is a short one, but an important one. And that is Roman Reigns commented on a WrestleMania match with The Rock. The significance of this is, um, I believe this is the first time that he has made a reference to it, despite the rumor being that these two would face at WrestleMania for nearly two years at this point. Um... His quote was uh, pretty relaxed. Uh, I, you know, semi in character. The way he was talking was kind of out, but with also his head of the table persona. Uh, the quote was, I don't book the show, brother. If it works out, then I'm ready. Uh, still torn. Still torn on if I want to see Roman versus The Rock. Uh, but I can tell you for certain that I do not want to see a title involved in that matchup. Seven. Go to Kai from behind. Dakota may secure this. Oh! Shoulders down. One, two, three. We have new champions. We got the power. We got the rage. Control the stage. Here are your winners. And the new WWE Women's Tag Team Champions. Corey, you were exactly right. The teamwork broke up and fractured at exactly the wrong time. Number seven this week is Dakota Kai and Io Sky winning the women's tag team titles on Raw. A decision that I think everyone thought would have happened at the end of the tournament to crown the new champions. Um, However weird decisions were made. I'll just leave it at that. But it seems that the right decision has been made now, and that Damage Control have two uh, titles, and now Bailey 
is going after Bianca Belair to try to get the Raw Women's Championship. Eight. Number eight this week is a report from Sports Kita that the USA Network is uh, feeling like they're not getting equal big title representation with Roman Reigns having both belts as SmackDown is and they want that representation so it is seemingly from this report that there are discussions to have Roman Reigns uh, drop one of the titles almost uh, to a level that he might be forced to drop one of the belts obviously storyline but I hope that that is not the route that we end up going to see Roman lose one, if not both, of the titles, because that feels, um, well, I feel like it would suck the life out of the energy of the titles and a potential uh, upcoming challenger to take down the Tribal Chief. So, as more develops on this i'm sure you will hear about it here either on this uh the count out or you will hear about it from conrad on the shows on wednesday or on any exclusive audio podcasts that he drops but uh we'll keep you updated as we know more nine at number nine this week we have news and reports that are conflicting about the young bucks sending out feelers to wwe uh some of the stories are reporting that their contracts are coming up they're just checking in it this is something that happens in the wrestling business um it you know it's a good way to help get the wrestlers more money on their contracts you know if they think that there's an option that they can leave and maybe hold that in the place that they want to stay um But like I said, we have conflicting reports. Some reports uh, are swearing that this has happened, while um, others have uh, been saying that this is not true, with uh, the Young Bucks in particular telling Dave Meltzer that they wouldn't need to do that, that Triple H would sign them if they wanted to go there. Which, in my opinion, that one seems to make the most sense to me. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong if they did do the feelers and they are going to kind of leverage that into contracts, especially with everything going on with the Bucks, the Elite, all of that right now with AEW. Um, However, I feel like that would have been a given for most people to know that the Bucks could go to WWE if they so wanted. So, um... Yeah, like I said, conflicting reports, but either way, uh, interesting to know that with contracts coming up and the situation that developed all last week, the Young Bucks may leave all elite wrestling? Question mark? Ten. And closing out our top ten, our ten count news of the week. Brandon Cutler, Pat Buck, and some of the other guys that had been suspended, uh, I think Christopher Daniels was one of the names mentioned, that had been suspended during the big uh, elite CM Punk brawl at the end of All Out after that post-media scrub have been back uh, reinstated from suspension. Uh, it was reported that Cutler, Pat Buck, Daniels, maybe uh, Nakazawa, some of the others were back at this past Wednesday's show. So um, I think as more and more gets found out and determined through this, uh, people will be brought back. I think your big four or five, depending on if they all have kept their jobs, is going to be the Elite, Kenny and the Bucks, and CM Punk and a Steel. Uh, I think those will be the ones that will be the last group of people to come back because of all the problems and litigation that came from that ordeal. But yeah, anyways, that was your 10 count news for the week. And now it's time for the top five wrestlers of the week how many guys in the last two decades have come by in wwe that were just like you young 
chiseled out of stone, full of potential. And how many of those guys fizzled out and went nowhere? Hundreds of them, hundreds. But let me ask you this, how many people like me and Johnny Gargano have come around WWE? And how many of those guys made it to the level we're at? You can count those on one hand because people like you are a dime a dozen while people like me and Johnny Gargano are one in a million. Now no shut up and listen to me because I want you to prove me wrong. Come on, prove me wrong. Prove all these people wrong. You know how to do it? You know how to do it? I'll tell you. You stop thinking about the moments that were handed to you and you start making your own moments. You know how to do that? You check your ego at the door. You look at yourself in the mirror. You realize you're not as good as you think you are, but you let your passion drive you to get better. And more importantly, you leave everything you have in this ring every time you step foot in front of these people. That, that, that's how you prove me wrong. That's how you become the future. That's how you become the face of WWE. Number five on Wrestlers of the Week this week is Kevin Owens. And uh, yeah, I know he didn't have a match this past week on Raw, but just like the week before with John Moxley giving an impassioned speech, Kevin Owens did so while tearing in to Austin Theory uh, and then literally tearing into him as the, a brawl broke out. And by the end of it, Austin Theory had been, um, I think, busted open, if not from the nose and the head, at least one of them, because he had blood in both places by the time they got done scrapping. Uh, so yeah, Kevin Owens is number five this week. Ray is laid out at our table. Now Ed's laid out in the ring. A ripper barking orders to Dominic Mysterio, but the lake is already done. Chair, for God's sake. Oh, judgment Day is going to end Ed's Some, damn career. Someone's got to come out here and stop this. Who? Who would you like? Ray is down on, our, on the floor at our feet. It's I, probably for the best. Just, and the Judgment Day is not done. The Judgment Day isn't even finished. And number four this week is the Judgment Day. Uh, they got Dominic Mysterio on their side. Rhea Ripley seemingly controlling Dom now. Uh, they took out Edge. They beat down Ray. Uh, every time that this group seemingly uh, feels weakened, they turn around and do something to stay on top, to keep their name going, to keep the relevancy going. It's a very interesting stable in WWE right now. And uh, I say that on... Um, the borderline of mediocrity. There are a lot of things about the Judgment Day that I don't understand yet and kind of feel awkward about as a stable, despite all the wrestlers in the group uh, being extremely talented and having a lot of interesting dynamics and stories working together. Um, so hopefully this is still pushing them in the right direction. We will Only time will tell. Um... But yeah, the Judgment Day, uh, standing tall at the end of Raw this week, they are number four on Wrestlers of the Week. Three. Coming in at number three this week is Swerve and Our Glory and their tag team defense against the Lucha Bros on AEW Dynamite. This was another solid defense by these guys. Uh, they're still kind of leaning into the heel stuff, but part of the uh, attraction and appeal that has led them to where they are in Wrestlers of the Week this week is their match with the Lucha Bros, in my opinion, was match of the night and was the highlight to the entire show in despite it having great ratings what i thought was a mediocre dynamite uh maybe one of the low five for me since the history of the show start but swerving our glory definitely put 
won an entertaining match with the Lucha Bros and picked up the win and retained their titles. So, welcome to the number three spot. Two. I won't be spending much time on number two this week as we just covered them in our uh, 10 count news, but Dakota Kai and Io Sky picking up the Women's Tag Team Championships on Monday Night Raw have earned them the number two spot this week, and congratulations on the big win. Heavy lies the head that wears the crown, and Melo has the biggest crown and the heaviest head in NXT. And that is all it is. And that's all it's gone. <laughs> what? This place is shaking. I never thought that we would see Solo Sokoa again. Yeah, and he's dressed to fight too. No chance. Could this be the moment? No chance. Fly in Solo. Sokoa got all of it. And coming in at number one this week on Wrestlers of the Week may be a surprise to some, but it really should not be. Solo Sokoa is number one on the Wrestlers of the Week this week. Since arriving on the main roster uh, at Clash of the Castle, uh, helping Roman Reigns retain his title, uh, Solo Sokoa had a main event match against the former number one contender Drew McIntyre that did go to a DQ finish but still that is a major stepping stone to go straight from NXT to the main event of Smackdown and then turn around and go back to NXT 2.0 this week and pick up the win for the bloodline for himself becoming the new North American champion Solo Sokoa has had the best trajectory of this week and is my wrestler of the week and now it is time for three predictions okay for my first prediction this week i'm going to say that brian danielson will win the aew title at arthur ash stadium uh at aew's grand slam against john moxley i would like to make a little note that already out of the three that i made last week one of them has come true when I said that these two would be the ones facing off for the title, but I think Danielson is the one who's walking out as champ. Prediction number two this week is that uh, Roman Reigns will only lose one of his two world titles if it's by a money in the bank cash in. Despite the news of the reports of him being forced to lose a title. I think that's a very terrible call, and I don't think that is one that anyone is going to make just stripping a belt from him due to the reasons of the networks. I think uh, Austin Theory will cash in in one of the matches that Roman Reigns is defending the uh, Uwu title, uh, but because of him cashing in, it'll be some kind of weird stipulation that the money in the bank only covers one of those titles. So therefore, then the match changed to be only for one of those titles. And I think that's how we will get a split. Uh, it'll be sneaky. It'll keep Roman uh, strong, especially if he's not the person pinned. And uh, he will still hold on to a title while losing one without being pinned or tapped out. And my last prediction uh, on this week's episode is that the Elite are going to return to AEW at the Winter is Coming event in December. I think they will be gone out of action for that long, Punk possibly the same, if not longer, 
if he returns. But I do think the Elite will return. But I think at this point, with as long as things are going to take, with the fact that they're taking off of the full gear uh, posters and advertising stuff, I think it comes after November. And what makes sense to me is rather than the beginning of the new year, we have this big event called Winter is Coming that AEW does, which seemingly has big name returns or big name moments. And I think the Elite returning would be a big name moment happening for that show this year. What did you guys think? Uh, if you liked it, if you could, please give us a five-star review. Um, you can find everything pro wrestling on all the social medias, on YouTube, on uh, podcast services. Please rate, review, like, subscribe, anything that they could possibly do to help us out if you enjoyed this. If you want to give us feedback, please uh, send uh, anything to the Facebook groups, put it in the comments, put it in the reviews. We'd love to hear about it. Love to know what you think about the count out, about everything pro wrestling. And until next week, I have been your host, LBJ, and I will catch you later. Pro wrestling, they can never be you. Listen to the podcast for the people, the best show that's here. So listen in, let the knowledge begin, the opinions, the lesson. Yes, by the fans, uh, for the fans, uh, not many in this can understand. Uh, this the podcast to show you who I am. Uh, Conrad Cushman, the legend in the plans. Uh, please listen every day to the showcase. The opinions and knowledge that anyone can take, showing you. How it is done, proving I am number one, what a legend becomes. This is now my time to show you that I am here. Uh, this podcast just to make it loud and clear. Uh, by the fans, uh, for the fans, uh, not many who's here can understand. Uh, everything pro wrestling, they can never be you. Listen to the podcast here for the people, the best show that's here, so listen in. Let the knowledge begin, the opinion and the lesson, yes. Everyday pro wrestling, they can never be you. Listen to the podcast for the people, the best show that's here, so listen in. Let the knowledge begin, the opinions, the lesson, yes.